goal is for week one challenge is to make sure that this dog looks good the second he hits this threshold. This is where you got to make this dog look good. So when he crosses this gate, he's got to be in a perfect stride right here. And every step needs to be perfect because this is where the judge is watching. Now, I know it seems like a ridiculous exercise, but this is the first impression for the judge. The other thing that this skill teaches you too is this allows you to be able to be in control of where you want that dog to look good because your judge throughout the ring may pick a spot over there, may pick a spot over here. So you know where your hand position needs to be. You know what your stride needs to be. You know what your, your shoulders, how you have to square up with them and everything. All these things have to be perfect in order for you to make future steps look good. Yeah. So for instance, if I come in here and I'm a little too tight on my lead right here, then I'm going to see that in this dog's gait when he comes into the ring. But then I realize that I'm too tight on that lead, so I drop my hand down, I, I, I fix my body posture, but what's going to happen is that's not going to come into play until the dog is about here. Yeah. Because whatever I do first is going to affect the steps in the future. So you've got to make sure that you have it together out there so that whatever you do there affects the steps right here. Yeah. And that's where most people mess up. Because what they'll do is they'll come into the ring here and they'll try to make everything perfect, but now it's too late. Because if you try to make everything perfect here, that's not gonna affect the dog till over there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so let's see what you got. When you came into this shot here, at this point, your body posture was like this. I really felt that. Right yep. After I did it. So this is, remember, you've got to be perfect back here for your dog to be perfect here. So if your body posture is bad here and you don't fix your body posture till you're here, your dog's not going to look good to here. So you got to make sure everything's perfect before you hit that threshold. Okay, so try that again. That looked good. <laughs> so you'll look good going out of the ring. <laughs> and you tell the judge, man, I, I picked the wrong dog. <laughs> That was better with your body posture, but there was no communication with your hand. So what we got a shot of here was your dog looking over this direction. Yeah. So here, I would have backed up here, make sure that that dog knows where that hand is, and make sure that you're, you got good body posture, good stride, and your dog is following that hand. Because since he didn't have anything to focus on, he wants to see everything else that's going on in the ring. Yeah. 
So I know this seems like a really simple exercise, but you can see it's not. Better. Yep, that was close. See if we can do it one more time perfectly. You do excellent going out. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. Yeah, I know. That was good. That was real good. It was borderline almost too tight, but he recovered from that. Because you were you were tight like right here, and then you dropped your hand so it was loose. So I believe, and I'll look at that in slow motion later, but I believe that he's gonna recover from that. So that's good. So tell me what you think about this exercise. Did you think it was simple in the beginning? And Yeah. Okay. And I said that's something like I always try to take that with me in the ring is like go in the ring once I cross that we are showing right yeah but it's other things like is he listening to me right like I'm doing it you're doing it, or you think but you're doing he, it yeah I think I'm doing it right but now is, he is my leash too tight so the best thing for you is to either have somebody videotaping you with the with their phone mm -hmm. or if you have somebody with a really good camera do high-speed photography because what will happen is if you see the slightest tension on your on that lead then what'll, that's gonna affect the reach of that dog. If your lead is not completely loose, then what'll happen is you'll see that when the dogs go to reach, they, they take their front paw like this and don't fully extend. Okay. When you have a loose lead and they have direction and good body posture, you get very balanced reached and drive. So go ahead and try one more time. Ooh, that was good. Be real careful on that pop. When you first start, look at me for a second. When you first start, you go like this, and he's not the dog to do that on because he can, he can basically flip you off and say, uh, excuse me, but I'm not a push start engine on a boat. <laughs> yes. So you gotta be real careful. Do, do a little jingle with the lead and then palm forward like this, but don't pull like you see other people do in the ring. Okay. Because if that tightens around his neck, you, he may decide, no, I'm not gonna do this. Okay. And he's not gonna give you 100%. Okay, so what do you think um, you can do that will help you make this perfect when you're going into the shows? Besides practicing? Besides practicing? Yeah. Um, I don't know, I, I actually would like to try, I think it'd be good to try, maybe not now, but like off leash, like no leash. Let's do that. Get him Let's do that. Thinking about like yeah, working with I like that. Nice. Let's do that. Let's go. Okay. Really get your stop looking at him so much. Get your body posture up because you're going to create a habit with that. Okay. okay. So go ahead and take him off lead. That was, that was good. It took a little while longer to get it started. And you gotta be careful with your hand because your hand is bouncing. 
Okay. That hand has to be like you're holding a smooth glass of water. Okay, so turn around and back up. Good yes. body posture. He didn't look good till he was right about here. You're, you, when you go out of the ring, you're very loose oh. and very comfortable. But when you go into the ring, you're very tense. And he's, he's basically showing that. So what you've got to do is you've got to be nice and loose, comfortable. You cannot focus on him. No eye contact with him. He's got to focus on that hand because when you focus with him on eye contact, he actually paces right here and then breaks into a gate somewhere here. And the last time he was pacing right into the ring here and then broke into a gate. So you've got to be relaxed. You have to have good body posture and you've got to get him to focus on that hand. So let's try that again. That was fantastic. Now, you're still bouncing with your hand a little bit, though. Keep it smooth. Keep it smooth. You're still bouncing. You're running like a girl. <laughs> okay. So what you should do without your dog is get a glass with your favorite beverage, gate around a ring somewhere, and whatever's left, you can drink. Okay. Because you you still got a little bit too much bounce. Yeah. So you might want to bend a little bit at the knee. Don't, don't try to reinvent the wheel right now. I want you to smooth out your gait without your dog, okay. not practicing with the dog. Okay. That way, if you get that perfectly smooth, then he'll smooth out too. But right now, if your hand is bouncing, that'll cause him to bounce a little bit also. Okay. Okay, Do so. I want to have my posture. You want your like, shoulder. Am I thinking like runner or like no. Andy Linton? No, you're Andy Linton. Like, perfect gait right there. You're like standing up. Like, yep. Okay. You're standing perfectly straight. Well, think about this. And even for a real runner, if you're leaning forward like this, you're not going to be a good runner. And the reason for that is because when you're standing up straight, you have good reach. Yeah. When you lean forward, you don't have reach now. Okay. And your dog will duplicate that. So that's why it's so important for you to have good posture square shoulders. The dog will square up on your shoulders. That's why you don't want to turn even the slightest bit because if you turn the slightest bit, now your dog's here. Sure. And then you're having to pull the dog up. But if your shoulders are square, your dog will be by your side. If you want your dog to lean out or lead out, then you put your shoulder forward like that. So your body is telling your dog everything it needs to know and your hand is giving the direction. Palm forward, go forward. Palm this way, get away from me a little bit. Palm in, come closer to me. Palm back, wait here while I get in front. So this, is, this has got to be very, very consistent because then you can do stuff like that and this dog will just automatically do it without you having to look at it, okay?